Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fullerton, and today I want to talk to you for a few minutes about electromagnetism. Our goals are going to be to explain how magnetic fields are created, and also to describe the factors affecting an induced potential difference due to a magnetic field line interacting with a moving charge. So to begin with, electromagnetism. Moving electric charges create magnetic fields, and the symbol for the magnetic field is a capital B. Current moving through a wire creates a magnetic field. This was discovered by Hans Christian Oersted, this guy, a Danish physicist in around 1820. You could verify this by taking a wire that has current flowing through it and putting a compass near it. You'll see the compass move to line up with the magnetic field coming through the wire, because as you're very close to the wire, the magnetic field from the wire is actually stronger than the magnetic field of the Earth. Now, placing a core of iron inside a coil of wire, known as a solenoid, so if we have a coil of wire and we run current through it, we have a solenoid. We create an electromagnet. But if we take an iron core and stick it in the middle there, the magnetic field due to that solenoid gets even stronger. So taking an electromagnet, putting an iron core inside it, greatly strengthens the magnetic field. The direction of the magnetic field we can figure out by what's known as the right-hand rule. And we're going to look at the first right-hand rule. There are actually three of them, but we're only going to talk about one for now. If we take a wire, and say we have a wire here with the current moving up, take the, your right-hand thumb, point it in the direction positive current flows, and then wrap your fingers around that wire. The direction your fingers curl tells you the direction of the magnetic field at those points. Let's see how this is applied. Determine the direction of the magnetic field above and below the current carrying wire. So we have a current carrying wire that is going to the right. Now if I point my fingers in the direction of that, if I point my, my thumb in that direction and wrap hand around it, I can see that above the wire, it's, my fingers are actually coming out toward me. To symbolize that, we draw a little tiny point with the circle around it almost like you're looking at the tip of an arrow coming toward you. So let's do that above the wire. Now if I continue to wrap the fingers of my right hand around that point, you'll see down below that wire that they're actually going away from you. We symbolize that by an X. That X is almost like you're looking at the feathers of the arrow as the arrow goes away from you. So to show a vector, a field coming toward you, you have a dot with a circle around it, and if it's going away from you, you have an X. That X being like the back end of an arrowhead. So in this case, above the current carrying wire, you have the field pointed toward you. Below the current carrying wire, it's going away from you or into the plane of the screen. Relative motion between a conductor and a magnetic field can induce a potential difference or a voltage in the conductor. So you can create a voltage by having some motion between a conductor and a magnetic field. The conductor has to cut across the magnetic field lines in its motion, its relative motion, and you get stronger magnetic fields by having faster movement, greater velocities, or by having stronger magnetic fields. This is an extremely useful property, and we use it all the time in generators. This is how we create electrical power. We convert kinetic energy, we have something moving, and we attach some magnets to it, or coils of wire, and not moving, you have either the coils of wire or magnets, the opposite side, and as those move relative to each other, you can induce or create a potential difference of voltage in those coils of wire. Here on the right, we have a picture of a water turbine, where water comes in from the side, falls down due to gravity, which spins that turbine, and up above you have rotors and stators, which have coils of wire and magnets, and they move relative to each other, inducing that potential difference, inducing a voltage. You're creating electrical energy. And you can do this in many different ways. Hydroelectric power, falling water spins the turbine. Fossil fuels, things like burning coal, they use the heat from the coal to make steam. The steam spins a turbine, and then that turbine, again, converts to electrical energy. Nuclear power, same idea. You use nuclear power to heat up water, turn it into steam, to turn, spin a turbine. And wind turbines, use the wind directly to spin a, spin a turbine, and you basically create an induced potential difference. 
We can even do that here in the classroom. Here is a very simple electrical generator known as a dynamo. And what we do is we have a coil of wire and magnets, and by spinning one relative to the other, we can light up a little light bulb right beside it. Very straightforward, kind of loud, but an application of this electromagnetic induction. The faster we spun it, the brighter the light got, the more potential difference we were able to create. So, sample question two. The air core of an electromagnet is replaced with an iron core. Compared to the strength of the magnetic field in the air core, the strength of the magnetic field in the iron core is, and our choices are less, greater, or the same. Well, of course, you put the iron core in the solenoid, you get a stronger magnetic field. So the magnetic field is greater, choice two. Here we have a diagram showing a wire moving to the right at some speed v through a uniform magnetic field that's directed into the page, hence the x's showing you the back of the arrow as the magnetic field points into the screen. As the speed of the wire is increased, will the induced potential difference increase, decrease, or remain the same? Well, once again, the faster it moves, the greater the induced potential difference, and the greater the magnetic field, the greater the induced potential difference. So since it's going faster, the potential difference must increase. Let's take a look at one more. The diagram below represents a wire conductor, RS, positioned perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field directed into the page. Describe the direction in which the wire could be moved to produce the maximum potential difference, the maximum voltage across its ends, R and S. Now remember, to create this induced potential difference, the conductor has to move across magnetic field lines. So to move across magnetic field lines, this could move either to the right or to the left to give you the maximum potential difference. So those would be your choices that would give you the greatest potential difference. Hopefully this was helpful, gets you started on electromagnetism. If you need more help, visit aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.